Tonight, surprise, surprise, Apple made billions, but has the company peaked? Facebook's earnings aren't too shabby. Amazon Prime adds HBO. And is the FCC destroying net neutrality? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 72 for Wednesday, April 23rd, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right to our top story. It was a big day for earnings reports, but we'll start alphabetically. Apple has released its fiscal Q2 2014 earnings, reporting $45.6 billion in revenue and $10.2 billion in net profit, representing $11.62 per share. Compared to the year-ago quarter, that's a growth of 4.6% in revenue and a 15.2% in earnings Per share. Joining us now to make some sense of these numbers is Mitch Wagner, the West Coast Bureau Chief of Light Reading. Hello, Mitch. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me on. Well, thanks so much for joining us. So what do you think about these Apple numbers? Analysts and Apple had both anticipated a pretty flat quarter, slight decline in iPad sales. We were expecting that, but there was quite an increase in iPhone sales. Apple performed better than ex anticipated. What do you think the street thinks? Well, I think uh, the street thinks that uh, I'm tap dancing here, but in fact, I have not checked the trading results. So I don't know what the street thinks. We'll, we'll know that when the numbers come out. I think what's more interesting is the question you started out with, which is, has Apple peaked? I think the answer to that is no. Got another call now, got to run. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> the answer to that, there is no evidence to suggest Apple has peaked other than that it's a uh, founder. Uh, tragically passed away. Sure. Um, in, in fact, we're you know you said yourself we're looking at record numbers here for the iPhone. For uh, uh, Mac sales are up. Um, one area that's down is the iPad. I think that's very interesting. Um, we we don't really know if Apple has peaked. That's the really interesting thing about watching Apple these days. Um, we are still in that zone where everything coming out of the pipeline is things that Steve Jobs still touched. So. We'll know if Apple peaked in five years. For now, things look great. iPhone sales were up 16.8%, which was pretty good. A lot of folks are, are are pointing to China. International performance looking pretty good. Tim Cook actually said on the earnings call uh, in response to iPad numbers dropping that, hey, the iPad is still the fastest growing product that Apple has ever put out and that it is the number one product in the enterprise. Uh, Fortune 500 companies use the iPad more than any other tablet. Does that surprise you? Um, surprise me that the, the iPad is growing really fast or that the iPhone is growing really well, fast? Well, that the iPad is, at least in the words of the company, still doing just fine, even though it's declined, uh, that, that Apple felt that, that, that it makes perfect sense to them. Uh, I think uh, there, there is some truth to that. There is some truth to that. Um, last year, sales would have been elevated because the iPad mini was new. And everybody wanted to get their hands on the iPad mini. This year, we've got incremental upgrades we're looking at for both products. So there's there's less pent-up demand there. Um, on the other hand, a decline is a decline. You can't, you can't tap dance that away. What I'm hearing anecdotally when I talk to my friends, even who are Apple enthusiasts, a lot of them are kind of skeptical on the need for tablets anymore. They say, I have an iPad Air. It's just as light as my iPad, or I have a MacBook Air, rather. It's just as light as my iPad for all intents and purposes. <laughs> it's got that keyboard that people seem yeah. to like. And it runs Mac OS X. Um, a lot of folks are weighing in on, as, as, as they do every earnings uh, uh, quarter that Apple has. Former CEO John Scully told CNBC Apple needs to prove that it can make creative leaps. A lot of, uh, there's a lot of buzz about new products that we haven't seen yet, and iWatch uh, rumors of a larger iPhone. What do you think Apple needs to do to keep people from saying that it has plateaued? Uh, it needs to come out with another category-busting product. Um, I don't know if there's one of those in the in the pipeline. There are the rumors of the upcoming smartwatch. There are the rumors of the upcoming maybe even smart glasses to compete with Google Glass. Who knows? There are perennial rumors of the Apple TV set. None of these things seem really thrilling to me. Um, I'm starting to wonder, here's something I just pulled out of my hat just prior to the show. No evidence to support this whatsoever. Awesome. 
What? Yeah, let's just make stuff up like everybody okay. does. Um, what if Apple came out with a really good convertible notebook tablet? Okay. App Apple's history is they their category busting products are products that people did and everybody thought was a great idea, but nobody really did well until Apple did it. MP3 players, they were out before Apple did it, but they were really clumsy. Same thing with smartphones, same thing with tablets. As as my you know, l l listen to my friends who are saying they have they they have the um they have the MacBook Air and MacBook Air is great, but wouldn't it be better if it sometimes worked as a tablet really well? I see where you're going. All right, well let me ask you this, Mitch. So there's there's rumors that Siri may be expanding out of iDevices. Uh, code in Apple's iOS 7.1 shows that Apple is at least considering voice support for Siri in its Apple TV set-top box, which would obviously put it on par with Amazon's Fire TV, where you can talk to it and tell it what you want it to play or what actor you'd like it to look up. Do you think that that's going to set Apple ahead of the game in any way? Can Apple do that better than Amazon has done it, even though Amazon basically introduced this feature? Maybe they could do it better. I don't see that as a category-breaking product. Um, you know, remotes are a pain in the neck to use, but so is voice recognition, especially in a living room environment where you got the kids yelling and the dog barking. So <laughs> while, while it would be a nice improvement, I don't see as the category buster. I mean, the, the problem with the, the, the set-top box TVs is that the, the content providers won't make deals. Right. So you're looking at this, you, you got one app for this and the other app for that, and you don't know if you're going to get your favorite show and you're never going to get Game of Thrones. So people aren't buying. All right, well, so million-dollar question. What are we going to see that's new as a, as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a new product that's going to surprise and delight us this year? Go. Well, if I, if I knew that, I'd go buy a thousand dollars in uh apple stock and wait for it to turn into a million dollars and retire uh, <laughs> i am intrigued by some of the predictions coming out about or the rumors really coming out about the iphone that we're going to see a 4.7 inch model or a 5.5 inch model um i think that's a really good idea um i think the time is right for that maybe even past right based on the sales of android phones and i think that kind of thing would further cannibalize tablet sales but Apple is not a company that is afraid to cannibalize its own products. Very true. All right. Well, Mitch Wagner, West Coast Bureau Chief of Light Reading, thanks so much for uh, speculating with me for the last few minutes. Uh, tell folks where they can find more of your work online. Well, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, and Google Plus at Mitch Wagner. I save my best work for light reading. And you could also meet me face-to-face -face at the Big Telecom event in June in Chicago. That's BigTelecomEvent.com. Excellent. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. All right, let's move on now to some other news. I mentioned earnings reports. Facebook's got a big milestone to report. In its first quarter earnings today, the company announced it now hosts more than 1 billion users visiting its site on mobile devices each month. Facebook also posted a profit of $0.34 cents on earnings of $2.5 billion, which beat analyst estimates as well. Compared to the same quarter a year ago, revenue is up 72%. Mobile is going strong for Facebook. The company makes 59% of its average advertising revenue for mobile devices now, which is up from 53% the previous quarter and much higher than from 30% the year ago quarter. So shares of Facebook were up about 2% in, uh, uh, at $62.50 in after hours trading. Now ahead of its Q1 earnings report, Amazon has announced that it now has streaming rights to a number of HBO series and will make them available through Prime Instant Video starting May 21st. The company also said that it'll add HBO Go to its recently launched streaming video box, Fire TV. The company says it's targeting a launch by year end, though no official date as of yet. Recode reports that Amazon is paying HBO more than $300 million over the course of a three-year term. That's according to people familiar with the deal. This is the first for HBO launching its shows in an outside subscription streaming service, but Prime Instant Video's selection won't have as much content that's available through HBO Go itself. New episodes won't be available right away. It's mostly legacy shows and HBO original movies. Prime Instant Video, of course, is available to Amazon Prime members who pay $99 per year for unlimited two-day shipping, streaming, video, and access to some eBooks. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that the Federal Communication Commission's proposal for new net neutrality rules 
will allow internet service providers to charge companies for preferential treatment, which effectively is the death of net neutrality. The rules will allow providers to charge companies for preferential treatment so long as they offer that treatment to all interested parties on a, quote, commercially reasonable term, with the FCC deciding whether the terms are reasonable on a case-by-case -case basis. Providers will reportedly not be able to block individual websites, but the journal reports that some forms of discrimination will be allowed, though that will not apparently include slowing down websites. The FCC will be begin to internally circulate the rules tomorrow ahead of a vote on May 15th. Eek. Mar Marketplace of handmade goods Etsy has acquired Grand Street, which sells indie electronics online. In fact, they call themselves the Etsy of electronics. Back in February, Grand Street launched its own version of a marketplace where indie electronics companies could sell their wares. The company says they'll keep their marketplaces separate, though. Grand Street's eight employees will join Etsy at its Brooklyn, New York headquarters. And finally, Google Maps Street View wants you to travel back through time. How? Well, now Street View can display multiple pictures of a place taken over a span of years. Vinay Shet, who is Google's Street View product manager, explains in a blog post, we've gathered historical imagery from past Street View collections dating back to 2007 to create this digital time capsule of the world. So maybe it's not such a jump back in history yet, but hey, Give Google another 10 years or even another 30 years from now when all the streets are empty because we've all moved to space. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2 and write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.